In motivating Nash and correlated equilibria, our main solution concept so far, we spent a lot of time speculating about how players will model each other's decisions and the implications of the resulting beliefs. For Nash, we said each player is willing to mix if they believe everyone else's strategies will make them indifferent, and they decide their probabilities to put the opponents in the same situation. On the other hand, for correlated equilibrium, we have a shared coordination mechanism that eliminates some of this circularity, but each player still gets a private signal from the coordinator and then has to update their beliefs about what everyone else is doing, conditioning on that signal. So either way, our solution concept is asking a lot of the players in terms of reasoning about other players' decision processes. But there are some circumstances where figuring out what others will do is way easier, specifically when they publicly announce and commit to their plans. And there are lots of strategic settings where that's exactly what happens. Think, for example, of the first mover advantage when companies enter a new market, or parties in a dispute agreeing to binding arbitration. In these sorts of cases, a public commitment to a particular strategy or a particular mechanism can be advantageous, even if it takes away your freedom of choice later. And this idea of pre-commitment leads us to two new equilibrium concepts. Stackelberg equilibrium, where players commit to their strategies sequentially, and course-correlated equilibrium, where everyone commits to follow the coordination mechanism, even if they end up not liking what it tells them to do. So beginning with Stackelberg equilibrium, it was originally proposed to model competition between firms. But in computer science, it has been widely used to model security games between an attacker and a defender. The standard setting of a Stackelberg game involves two players, a leader and a follower. And our analysis assumes that the leader will commit to some mixed strategy, which the follower will observe and best respond to. In a security game where there are multiple targets that could be attacked and need to be defended, this kind of model would make sense if the defender is allocating their defense resources randomly every day, and the attacker has some way to observe that deployment and over time figure out the probabilities that the defender is using and only then decide which target they're going to attack. The scenario I've just described would make the defender the Stackelberg leader who commits to a mixed strategy, and the attacker is the follower who best responds to that mixture. And so in this example game with two targets, A and B, the unique Nash equilibrium uses these mixed strategies. Player one defends a with probability two-fifths, and B with probability three-fifths, while player two attacks A with probability one-third, and B with probability two-thirds. But now, if instead of Nash equilibrium, we want to use Stackelberg equilibrium, where the defender will pre-commit to some mixed strategy, instead of solving for each player's probabilities that make the other indifferent, we need the leader to decide what mixed strategy they're going to commit to, which means they need to think about, as a function of their mixed strategy, how does the opponent's best response change, and what probabilities can they use to make that best response as favorable as possible. So, because player one has two actions, we can describe their mixed strategy as probabilities p and 1 minus p of defending targets a and b, respectively. And if we plot player two's expected utility for each of their actions as a function of that probability, we see that when p is less than or equal to 2 fifths, Attacking A is a best response for the follower, 
Whereas if p is greater than or equal to 2 fifths, attacking b will be a best response for the follower. And now, since the leader knows that the follower will always play a best response to their mixed strategy, they know that whenever their probability of defending A is less than two-fifths, the follower will definitely attack A. And if the probability is greater than two-fifths, the follower will definitely attack B. And so we can think about the payoff that the leader gets for different mixed strategies under the assumption that the follower is playing the best response to each of those mixtures. When the follower is attacking target A, the leader will get a payoff of 0 with probability P, and a payoff of minus 2 with probability 1 minus P, for an overall expected utility of 2p minus 2. And when the follower's best response is b, the leader will get minus 1 with probability p, and 0 with probability 1 minus p, for an expected utility of minus p. So now, if the follower plays this best response, resulting in these expected utilities for the leader, we can plot those as a function of the leader's mixed strategy. When p is between 0 and 2 fifths, a is a best response for the attacker, and so the utility of the defender will be 2p minus 2, which we've plotted here. And then over the range 2 fifths to 1, where b is the follower's best response, the leader will get a payoff of minus p, which we've plotted here. So now the leader wants to pick their probability to maximize their payoff. So clearly with this function giving higher utilities, the Defender wants to pick probabilities that will induce the attacker to best respond with B, but within the range where the attacker's best response is B, the defender does better by lowering P, which means increasing the probability that they will be defending B. And that's true all the way up until this tipping point where the attacker's best response switches from being B to being A, and we have a discrete jump in the defender's utility. But we still need to figure out what happens at P equals 2 fifths, which was the point where the attacker is indifferent, so both A and B are best responses. In that case, how can we predict which one they'll play, and therefore which of these utilities the defender will get? Well, the key insight is that it only takes an extremely tiny perturbation in the probabilities to break that indifference. If we add epsilon to the defender's probability of A, then we'll be over here where B is the attacker's unique best response. So we can think about the defender's utility when they play the mixture 2 fifths plus epsilon A and 3 fifths minus epsilon B. Well, in that case, we know that the best response for the attacker is B. And so with probability 3 fifths minus epsilon, the defender will get 0. And with probability 2 fifths plus epsilon, they'll get minus 1. And so they can use that epsilon change in the probability to give the follower a strict best response and thereby control which action the follower will pick. And since for any positive epsilon, B will be the attacker's best response, we can make that epsilon arbitrarily small, and this leads us to the idea of a strong Stackelberg equilibrium which says that when picking a best response, the follower will break ties in the leader's favor. 
And so, if the leader picks the strategy that puts the follower exactly at the indifference point, we'll assume that the follower picks whichever of their actions gives the higher utility for the leader, because if they didn't, the leader could cause them to by a tiny perturbation to their probabilities. And so, in this game, the strong Stackelberg equilibrium is for the leader to play a two-fifths, three-fifths mixture, and the follower to play action B. So Stackelberg equilibria are what we get instead of Nash if the players commit to their strategies sequentially. But what if everyone makes their pre-commitments at the same time? Well, if everyone commits to a mixed strategy all at once, we're just back to Nash. But what if, instead, they commit to a coordination mechanism? What would that mean, and how would it be different from a correlated equilibrium? Well, for a coordination mechanism to be an ordinary correlated equilibrium, everyone must be happy participating in the mechanism all the time, no matter what action it tells them to play. But maybe if the players could pre-commit to following the mechanism, even if they don't like the action it gives them in the moment, they could end up doing better overall. Think, for example, of a bunch of friends agreeing to randomize who's going to host the party. If you knew you were going to have to host, you might think it's not worth the work. But if you could commit in advance to hosting if your name gets drawn, you might be happy about the guarantee of a party and willing to accept the chance that you'll have to host. So what does this look like in our mathematical models? Well, like with a correlated equilibrium, our coordination mechanism will specify some distribution over the game's outcomes. In this example game, the proposed coordination mechanism D randomizes 50-50 between these two outcomes. Which seems pretty good, since both players get an expected utility of 5. But is this distribution a correlated equilibrium? Well, to check, we need to see if everyone is always happy to do what the mechanism says. For player 1, the mechanism sometimes tells them to play T, and sometimes M. When it tells them to play T, they update their beliefs and conclude that player 2 will definitely be playing L. And in response to L, they're totally happy to play T. But if the mechanism tells player 1 to choose M, when they update their beliefs, they'll conclude that player 2 is definitely choosing C. And in response to C, M gets them a utility of 2, and B gets them a utility of 4. And so, when player 1 is told to play M, M is not a best response, and so we know that this is not a correlated equilibrium. But what if the players had some way of pre-committing to follow this mechanism? Would they choose to do so? Well, if they're able to pre-commit, then they would have a choice between each of their actions or committing to follow the mechanism. And so, we need to compare expected utilities and see if committing to the mechanism is a best response. As usual when performing these sorts of checks, each player will be assuming that the others all play according to the proposed equilibrium. And so, if player 1 thinks that player 2 is playing according to the mechanism, and is considering not participating in the mechanism, and instead just choosing one of their actions, then from player 1's perspective, when player 2 follows this distribution, there is a 50% chance that they'll play L, and a 50% chance that they'll play C. So player 1 perceives the ex-ante probabilities that player 2 will randomize 0.5, 0 0.50. And likewise, if player 2 is assuming that player 1 will follow the mechanism, they see player 1 randomizing 0.5, 0 0.50 over T, M, and B. The difference here from correlated equilibrium is that 
the probabilities are being evaluated without the mechanism telling you an action. When we checked the correlated equilibrium, we said, if the mechanism tells you to play M, then you update your beliefs about what the other players are doing. But here, we are only evaluating beliefs based on the mechanism unconditionally, before any actions have actually been chosen from the distribution. And so, if each player believes that the opponent is randomizing 0.5.50, they can compare their expected utility if they participate and follow the distribution against their expected utility for each of their alternative actions. For player 1, who thinks player 2 is playing 0.5.50, they'll evaluate the expected utility of t as a half chance of 8 and a half chance of 0 for an average of 4. They'll evaluate the expected utility of m as 0.5 times 0 plus 0.5 times 2 for a utility of 1. And they'll evaluate the expected utility of b as 2. Likewise, player 2, thinking that player 1 will play 0.5.50, evaluates l as giving an expected utility of 1, c as giving an expected utility of 4, and R as giving an average payoff of 2. And so, each player comparing all of their alternatives against the expected utility if they participate in the mechanism will decide to do so. And so, even though we concluded that this distribution is not a correlated equilibrium, if the players have a way of pre-committing to follow the mechanism, even if they end up not liking the action it assigns them, then it is in fact a best response for them to commit, and so this distribution is a coarse correlated equilibrium. So when we're doing game theoretic analysis, if we think there's a reason that the players can publicly pre-commit to strategies or to coordination mechanisms, then we might want to apply these solution concepts and look for a Stackelberg equilibrium or a coarse correlated equilibrium. And as we'll see, these solution concepts often turn out to be relatively easy to compute, which will give them a big advantage in cases where they are a plausible way of making a prediction.